All right, folks, today's video I'm pretty excited about. We're going to take a look at this device. It is called the DMM Check Plus, and that stands for Digital Multimeter Check Plus. It is a reference standard or a calibrated standard that you would use to test or validate the functionality of a multimeter. These come in a couple of different configurations. We're going to take a look at those configurations. I did get the fully loaded version uh, that has all of the options, so we can test a bunch of different stuff. But uh, hang on and let's get started. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all your PCB project needs. Regardless of your requirements, PCBWay makes it easy to get a quote and get you prototyping and working on your project as fast as possible. PCBWay.com has a wizard that allows you to input your project parameters and then get a quote generated so you know exactly what your costs are going to be. At any time, if you need help, PCBWay's friendly support staff is only a chat away. All right, so let's just take a quick look at their website, and I'll have a link for this below. It's dmmcheckplus.com, and here you can see the device. And they say it is a low-cost calibration reference for calibration made simple. Over here, you can see in the menu a link for the shop. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on that. And they have a couple of different things. Um, this would be the base unit. It runs off of a 9-volt battery. Uh, if you did buy this, I would recommend buying the enclosure kit, and then you can just connect the battery to the back of that. This is uh, an inductance and capacitance board, which uh, I did add for mine um, because I wanted to be able to measure these things. What's handy is, is that over time, you may need to get your DMM Check Plus recalibrated, and uh, you can also uh, purchase an order for that, and you can send them your device. I think you need to include shipping. I have not had to do that, so I'm not entirely sure of the process. But here they go through some of their featured products. But let's just go ahead and pick the, the board. Uh, when you do this, you get the board itself, and then here are your options where you would select them. You can come over here and pick the enclosure with the acrylic top. You can add a secondary frequency, and I did this. And what I did is I added the 100 hertz and the 10 kilohertz. I just put that down here in the options. And then I tacked on the reference board. And then you can see that comes to 190 bucks. So that's not really cheap, but um, I do a lot of tests on multimeters, and I play around with multimeters quite a bit. So for me, this made sense, and it was something that uh, I was excited about. So your DMM Check Plus will come with the measured values or the calibrated values for the different options that uh, you selected and what you built. Down here, it will tell you when it was calibrated, and it will tell you the equipment that was used. Also, when you turn this thing on, you want to leave it on for a little while to warm up. So it was calibrated at 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, most of us know that depending upon the temperature, your ambient temperature, or the temperature of the device under test, in this case, the DMM Check Plus, you could get different values. And so it's a good idea to turn this on and leave it on for a few minutes, um, which is what we're doing. They also send a, it's not an instruction book or anything like that, but they send this printout that goes over the different components and different measurements um, and then walks you through how to take those different measurements. It's really well documented in a professional way, um, especially if you buy a lot of uh, Chinese made electronics equipment, something like this is a godsend. And I just wanted to show this, uh, this certificate of calibration. All right, so for today's video, we are going to use these test leads. These are not the test leads that came with this multimeter. Um, we're going to use these because when I open them up, they have these little hooks. I don't know if you can see that. They're just going to make connecting to these terminals nice and easy. You can just use regular test leads and touch them and get readings. But uh, to make it easier for me while shooting this video, I'm going to use these. Now, one of the things I'll notice is that these are not, these are like some kind of plastic or PVC and they're pretty thin. These are not the best test leads in the world. So I would imagine that they would have some impact on our readings, but it's not going to be enough to make a material difference. The other thing is, is that we're not testing the accuracy of this meter. We're using this meter to demonstrate the functionality of the DDM Check Plus. So let's go ahead and hook these up. I think I mentioned it earlier, this runs off of a 9-volt battery. 
And in here, you can see a positive and a negative terminal. They are for testing your battery. So one of the things I wanted to do was just do a quick test and see how we're doing on the nine volt battery. I believe they said somewhere around 7%, I'm sorry, seven volts is where you would want to think about replacing uh, your battery, but you would do that based off of whatever is in the instruction manual, not what I'm telling you now. So let's go ahead and hook that up. And then we can see that we have 9.22 volts DC. So we have plenty of battery life left. <clears throat> All right, now taking a look at this, I have an AC and DC switch here on the left-hand side. I'm gonna switch it down to DC current. And then I'm gonna come here and you can see volts. I have a positive and negative terminal. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna connect this up to get us a reading. And according to um, my calibration sheet, I should get five volts DC and it looks like we have 4.99. Let's go ahead and change this to AC, see what we get. And here we go, we have 4.959. And according to the certificate, it would be 4.999. So we are okay with that as well. Now one of the things that this uh, can do is you can test your Hertz. And so when I switch this over, you can see, according to my sheet, I should be at 100 hertz. And we, we are at now 99.9999, which is in spec, according to this meter. Now, I can switch this back and forth because I have two different frequency readouts. My second one is 10.000354 kilohertz. Here depicted on the meter, we have nines all the way across the board. So 9.999 kilohertz. Okay, let's go ahead and test some other stuff. Okay, what we've done is we've switched this to microamps. And here we have the I for current. We have positive and we have negative terminals. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to test our DC current source, which should be 0.9996 microamps. And here we have 0.99. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this to AC where we should have 1.001. And we are a little bit below that with 0.98. Now I could measure this with other meters using these test leads or different test leads with these meters and potentially get closer to that. Okay, now we are going to measure some resistance. So if I go over here, you can see a, a series of resistance values. The first one being 100 ohms. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. And we are going to have to adjust our meter. And there we go, we are at 100 exactly. Now we are going to move over and test 1000. And that tells us we have 9999 kilo ohms. Now we are going to go to 10,000 ohms. And that is going to be 9.98 kilo ohms. So again, we're pretty close. And now we are going to go to 100,000. And that gives us 100 kilo ohms or 100,000 ohms. So we're happy with that. Now with this, we talked a little bit about the added board here that allows us to measure capacitance and inductance. And I can measure capacitance with this meter, but what I've decided to do is we're gonna just turn this off, if I can figure out how to do that. And then we're gonna break out this, which is um, a tool that I like to use, and it is an LC meter specifically for measuring um, capacitance and inductance. So let me get this all set up. And these clips are a little bit short. And the other thing is uh, they're supposed to be short when you measure capacitance and inductance because long leads can introduce that. Um, the other one is, is that these alligator clips are not something I want to connect to these posts because I want to preserve these posts as long as possible. So we're going to just go ahead and we're going to take these out. And uh, we are going to use these other leads of questionable quality. So let me go ahead and insert those. 
<clears throat> now the first thing you'll see um, is that with these, we're already measuring a high rate of, of uh, capacitance, 18 picofarads, 16 picofarads. So we need to calibrate or zero out these leads. And I'm not sure exactly how well this is going to work, but let's just go ahead and do that. So now we have no reading and let's go ahead and connect these up and, uh, and see what happens. So this would be one microfarad and it is reporting 1.59, 1 1.6. 1 this should be 0 0.1 microfarad. Okay. This should be 0 0.01. And it's going to show us in nanofarads on here. And this should be 0 0.001. And that's off by a little bit. I'm not sure how much of this is the leads versus the accuracy. This isn't the best meter in the world, but uh, again, we're measuring it here. And let's go ahead and we're going to switch this to inductance values. And in order to calibrate this or zero it out, I'm supposed to connect these together, press this zero function. They have been zeroed out. So our first value here is one microhenry. And we have 1.121. 1 and what we have here is 10 microhenries, and we have 10.10. .10. According to the sheet, it's 10.53. Let's go over to 100. And we're coming in a little bit shy at uh, 99. Okay, I think that's going to wrap it up. What I wanted to do again in this video is just kind of show this standard. This is something that we're going to be using um, moving forward for any multimeter type test that we're going to be doing on the channel. Um, just wanted to share it and show everybody what we're up to. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.